Welcome SESers to our bi-weekly recording. We've been doing these things for about a year and four months now uh, at about a bi-weekly interval every two weeks. Today, I am very honored to have the founder of SES Engineers, Tom Conrad, who is with us today. Tom, of course, is the C in SES Engineers, was one of the three principals that founded SES uh, back in 1970. That was a few years ago. We're here today to talk about Tom's career, about his activity within SES Engineers, about the things he's done in solid waste management, and most importantly, we frame it up with the fact that he has just won the Robert L. Lawrence Distinguished Service Award of 2021. SES applied for Tom on his behalf, and he was the unanimous selection of the SWANA board to receive that award. That award will be presented in Orlando at SWANA WasteCon in November of 2021 uh, this year. The reasons that Tom won the award was number one, his long and distinguished service uh, in, in the early years and throughout the years of the solid waste industry. And number two, SES's activity. We are the largest, most active member of SWANA. Uh, that has been noted by SWANA. And Tom's connection to it is that he and Bob Stearns always promoted SES's activities in our professional and trade associations. And SWANA is probably the leading one among those. SES has the biggest membership within SWANA and the biggest footprint. And by that, I mean presentations at conferences, exhibit booths for 40 years now, and also committee chairmanships and uh, participation on those committees. So, uh, Tom, we'll uh, turn it over to you, I guess. How do you feel about the award? Well, I'm honored and humbled. And also, I was surprised uh, because I was not real active in SWANA personally. Uh, we uh, got you guys interested and involved in it, and that was my my contribution. Well, I think you framed up your contribution well, but let's talk a little bit more about that. As I mentioned, uh, yes, you weren't too active in SWANA itself, but SWANA is very aware of the fact that you pushed SES, its biggest and most active members. Could you describe how you uh, pushed SES to participate in SWANA and other trade and professional associations? Well, Bob Stearns and I uh, both felt that participation in professional organizations is very important for career development. Uh, and since uh, one of our capabilities was solid waste management, we got involved with SWANA, or I should say its predecessor, uh, GRCDA. Uh, the GRCDA is Government Refuse Collection and Disposal Association, Sometime in around 1990, uh, uh, they changed their name to SWANA. Uh, SWANA does mean uh, Solid Waste Association in North America. Uh, Bob Stearns was very was always very active in SWANA as well as uh, others. Uh, I was more of the backroom guy. Uh, many of our clients were in SWANA, so uh, involvement with SWANA provided opportunities for uh, networking with clients, as well as for professional development purposes. Uh, in the 1980s, we decided to hold uh, company-wide technical meetings in conjunction with SWANA uh, on the weekend before the SWANA conference. And that contributed to SES having even additional staff attending SWANA's conferences and becoming an act and uh, them becoming active in SWANA's uh, committees and becoming officers in SWANA. That's a good description, Tom, of uh, how you pushed at SES's activity in SWANA from the very beginning and, of course, to this very day. Um, but you've also had a very distinguished career in solid waste, and it actually preceded the founding of SES in 1970. Could you review uh, your involvement in the solid waste industry dating back uh, before SES in the 1960s and then in the early years, the 1970s of SES? Well, from my perspective, uh, solid waste was put on the map by the enactment of the Solid Waste Disposal Act of 1965. Public, uh, the Public Health Service administered the act and they awarded uh, demonstration projects. Uh, they, they were uh, also appropriated $12 million to carry out their function. Uh, I worked for Ralph Stone and Company at the time, and we prepared uh, several successful grant proposals and we carried out the projects. Yeah, living there in California, uh, 
I think the landfill practices in in uh, the state were advanced compared to uh, other uh, locations. And by the time uh, SCS uh, was started, uh, municipalities had started to contract for solid waste consulting services, although the fees were were quite modest, especially by today's standards. Of course, uh, money was worth a lot more uh, back then, I guess, dollar per dollar, but uh, they were smaller, mo more modest projects compared to the projects of today. Let's move on to 1970. 1970, of course, was the foundation of SES engineers. It was also the first Earth Day and the founding of the United States Environmental Protection Agency. Tom, could you describe the founding of SES in 1970 and the establishment of the firm's solid waste practice? Well, it Bob Sturz and I both worked for Ralph Stone and Company uh, at the time, early in 1970. And in March, uh, Stearns uh, resigned uh, when uh, Stone insulted him for the for the last time. Uh, he insulted him in front of a client. Uh, uh, Stone was not a good personnel manager, to put it uh, mildly. He, he was a very difficult person to work for. Uh, I, had, so I, I had also been planning to resign sooner or later. And I was thinking about maybe becoming a, establishing a sole proprietorship. Well, when Stearns left, he and I started talking. And Kurt Schmidt, who had worked for Stone for several years before, heard that Stearns had uh, resigned. So he joined uh, us in, in starting SCS. And the three of us pretty well covered the waterfront as far as uh, civil environmental engineering, Stearns being the solid waste expert, Schmidt being the water and sewage expert, and me being a jack of all trades. We knew each other and we knew our strengths and weaknesses and each of us uh, felt we trusted each other. And trust, very important. Uh, our office was located in uh, North Long Beach, which happened to be the centroid of uh, where the three of us lived. Being in Southern California, there was some invol uh, community involved. Uh, we prided ourselves on starting the company with no projects and not stealing any projects from Stone. Uh, but in our first five years, we were really quite successful with our uh, uh, proposal writing and interviewing. And uh, uh, we also hired a, a good number of staff who had experience in solid waste. And so that that gained us a lot of uh, uh, experience and, and uh, put us in a much better position to uh, compete with others for uh, uh, project work. Great, Tom. Well, let's move, Tom, beyond the founding of SES Engineers in 1970. You, of course, relocated from our headquarters, founding headquarters in Long Beach, California, to the Washington, D.C. area, eventually Reston, Virginia. Uh, to uh, provide support on a number of federal contracts, notably with the foundation of US EPA, EPA contracts in those early 1970s. That work uh, really became the foundation of many of not only SES's solid waste practice, but many of the regulations that came out later on, the landfill criteria, the open dump inventory, RECRA subtitle D, RECRA subtitle C, and the Superfund law as well. Could you describe the work we were doing that period of time and its relationship to the subsequent re regulations? Well, uh, you mentioned that I uh, relocated to uh, um, Washington, D.C. area. Well, one of our uh, projects, uh, we promised that a principal would uh, move to Washington, D.C. for three months to uh, carry out the research. This was a project to research uh, solid waste and uh, recycling practices of federal agencies. So uh, I came out here and uh, uh, Dave Roth joined me out here and uh, we we uh, did our uh, uh, research. 
uh, I stayed and Dave returned to uh, Long Beach. Uh, I stay here because it was a good place to live. We were doing a lot of EPA work and other federal agency work and uh, uh, schools were good. So just everything was going for it. Oh, and we were, my wife was particularly ready for a change. So anyway, we uh, uh, established an office here in Reston, Virginia. And uh, that uh, gave me uh, the opportunity to coordinate uh, with EPA uh, easily. As a matter of fact, that's where we uh, managed to hire uh, Jim Walsh and Mike McLaughlin back in those early days. Anyway, we were uh, uh, awarded many uh, research contracts by uh, EPA. Some 75% of our revenue was federal study projects. And uh, those research projects provided the basis for EPA's uh, regulations and uh, guidelines and other uh, criteria like that. We've talked about the 70s and the early 80s. Let's move on to uh, the second half of the 1980s and beyond. SES was founded, obviously, as an environmental engineering consulting firm in 1970, and we continued solely on that path in, until 1986. In 1986, we began to vertically integrate, first in 86 through the formation of field services, construction, and O&M practices, and then 2001 with the SES Energy Unit. Could you talk about uh, the decision to move in that direction and the development of those practices too, Tom? Well, uh, in the 70s and 80s, SCS designed uh, many uh, landfill gas systems. Contractors didn't have much experience in building these systems, so it was uh, like pulling teeth to uh, get these systems correctly uh, built. We were approached by a landfill gas system uh, contractor to start up a subsidiary to build landfill gas systems. And that seemed like a real win-win situation. Um, <clears throat> expand the company and also ensure that our landfill gas systems uh, system designs were constructed correctly. Um, and at the time, uh, we had we were doing a few, uh, a little bit of work on the operation and maintenance of these of systems uh, that we had designed. And uh, so Galen Patoyan, who was maintaining these systems, uh, transferred to this to our subsidiary, and he was responsible for operation and maintenance services. Uh, and the subsidiary was named uh, SCS Field Services. And as Jim said, in 2001, uh, SCS Energy was established to design, construct, and operate landfill gas and biogas to energy facilities. And obviously, we are the company is still uh, into both the uh, uh, landfill gas uh, systems, landfill gas utilization systems, and into uh, operation and maintenance uh, in a big way. Great, uh, Tom. Well, we've been talking exclusively really about our solid waste practice within SES engineers, but of course we, we have a robust environmental services practice outside of solid waste management. Could you talk about uh, the development of that practice over the years? Well, the services that are provided by SCS back in the early days uh, was known as environmental services has always been in the company's practice. It wasn't something we just expanded to. It was something we were doing in addition to uh, solid waste work. Uh, historically, the staff has kidded each other uh, that environmental services are a segment of solid waste uh, uh, of our solid waste practice. And then there are other people that say uh, just the opposite, that the uh, solid waste services are uh, a segment of the environmental services. Uh, anyway, uh, many firms provide environmental services, 
Uh, there are not a lot of firms that have a strong solid waste practice, and that's really what differentiates uh, SCS. 1986 was also another important uh, year. It was the establishment of the Employee Stock Ownership uh, Plan or program, the ESOP. Obviously, it's it's allowed the sustainability of SES engineers for now over 50 years. It's created an employee ownership culture, which I think is characterizes SES very well. And it's also allowed every employee who is active in the firm to have a piece of the rock, to own a piece of SES engineers. Uh, that was really the initiative of you and Bob Stearns. Could you tell us about that foundation and what you were thinking at the time, Tom? Well, it really goes back further than that. It goes back to the early uh, to mid 70s. Uh, uh, we sold stock to key employees back in as early as uh, 1974, as I recall. Uh, we we felt that having a uh, key uh, employees own part of the company was important for the development of the company. And uh, so in 19, back in about 1980, we started thinking about having an ESOP, adopting an ESOP plan, but the company wasn't making, making enough money to make an ESOP plan uh, worthwhile. Um, 1985 and 1986 were really strong years for our industry and also for SCS. And so that is when we started our ESOP program. The ESOP program was, <laughs> it was a difficult program to explain to the employees. They, they didn't catch on to the value of the ESOP. And it took a lot of uh, time and effort to educate people uh, about the value of the ESOP. And I think we finally, uh, were successful in, in that effort. And I think most of the people in the company now appreciate the value of the ESOP. It's gotten us to over 50 years and we benchmark ourselves against many, many firms and uh, be they public companies or uh, sole proprietorships or partnerships, uh, those firms haven't sustained like SES. And I think that's because of our ESOP and the, the wisdom of the founders, including you and Bob Stearns to move in that direction back in 1986. Thank you, Tom. Let's move on to uh, mentoring. Uh, you're known as a model of mentoring within SES engineers. I can speak for myself and Mike McLaughlin and Bob Gardner. You hired all three of us and we all worked at your side in the Reston office for several years. Mike, at least to this very day there in Reston. My, uh, I've relocated to Cincinnati and Bob Gardner is down in Norfolk right now. But could you talk about why mentoring was so important to you and why you chose to develop or spend so much time doing it? Well, mentoring came naturally for me, for one thing. And secondly, we had young staff. And so I felt it was necessary to uh, mentor these young staff members in order to achieve uh, of quality deliverables. Uh, some of the young, uh, younger staff uh, needed more mentoring than others. The three of you, uh, you didn't need very much, just a little, a little push here and there. But mentoring is a very personal uh, thing and needs to be personalized in order uh, to, uh, based on the mentor's personality as well as the protege's aptitude. Uh, I found mentoring to be very success, very, uh, was professionally satisfying when it was successful. And uh, I have been persistent enough person that uh, I would keep after it until it was uh, successful. Great. Tom, I think mentoring is in your character and your value set, but I would ask, was there somebody early in your career uh, that you uh, modeled yourself after who was mentoring you? Uh, my first reaction to that, to that question is uh, not really. Then I thought a little more about the response. When I first went to work for the FAA, right out of college, uh, the guy I was assigned to assist provided some guidance to me. Um, after that, as a field engineer, I was on my own. I could say that Ralph Stone and his wife Sunshine Stone provided mentoring in a fashion. Uh, I learned a lot, both things to do and things not to do. 
Bob Stearns provided a form of mentoring. His reviews of my draft reports uh, kind of taught me how to uh, become a good writer. And I think I was successful in learning how to become a good writer, thanks to Bob Stearns. Tom, uh, SES Engineers is now 51 years old. The solid waste industry, it might be debatable, probably 60 years plus. Certainly your involvement uh, in it uh, runs about that long. What do you think of SES and the solid waste industry today? Uh, well, uh, SES's leaders are capable, fine people. And I'm confident that they'll lead the company forward in a manner that I'll be proud of. The company has younger staff who can take leadership positions as the current leaders retire. The solid waste industry, they've grown up over the past 50 years. Um, I th and I think they're going to prosper, they're going to prosper in the future. And I think that uh, SES will do well to continue its leader, leadership position in the solid waste industry. Thank you, Tom, for talking about SES uh, in the future um, and where we are today. I would note that the engineering news record Sourcebook rankings just came out, and SES is again number one in the solid waste engineering business. We're very proud of that ranking. Um, we've been number one a number of times, and we are again this year. And I think it speaks to the fact that we got in on the ground floor, and the and the founders of the firm had the wisdom to establish the ESOP that has allowed us to sustain um, against and above our competition all these years. We move on to our young professionals. We like to refer to our young professionals, like to refer to all of our employees as humble, hungry, and smart. Um, do you feel that way? And and um, uh, what what's been your practice with regard to mentoring young professionals and 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 me and other employees all these years with regard to those three adjectives? Well, when I when I was a young professional, uh, up through. Uh, and I call myself a young professional up through the first five or 10 years of SCS's uh, existence. I thought of, my, thought of myself as hungry and smart. Uh, I don't know about humble. You, you're better to answer that than you and Mike are better uh, to answer that than I. Uh, beyond that, I, uh, I was persistent. And I handled many all-nighters. In fact, I kind of liked all-nighters. Being a masochist, I guess I'm a masochist because I like doing all-nighters, in part because they normally resulted in a, a major win in a proposal or a completion of a project. Anyway, I, uh, I, I, I've always been detail-oriented. You know, the devil is in the detail. I strove for quality, worked to provide the client what he needed. Thank you, Tom. Let's move on on a personal note, uh, I guess, to the uh, the mantra, work hard and play hard. Um, I know uh, you got me into running many, many years ago. You've had an outstanding uh, marathoning career. Could you talk a little bit about that and how your health is so important to you, Tom? Uh, yeah, there's really, there's really. I don't think there's anything more important than your health. Uh, family, that's that's pretty close. And uh, what you do in uh, for business, uh, for uh, occupation, that that's also important. But health is right up there. I'm not an athlete. I just like doing athletic stuff. Um, yeah, I, I've done uh, lots of marathons, ran nine marathons, and I walked 96 marathons, won in every state, had a great time doing it, Visit, got a second round of visits to all the states, uh, and I had some pretty other, some other pretty exciting uh, activities. I biked across the country with my two sons, and that was the best adventure I ever had. Climbed uh, Mount Kilimanjaro with a couple of other SCS people, uh, Greg Vogt and his wife. Um, climbed uh, Mount McKinley. 
so we've uh, had some good activities in the in the, uh, over the years, and how I I was I was a pretty efficient person, being able to uh, uh, work sixty hours a week and uh, do all those activities, but somehow it all got done. I didn't sleep a whole lot, uh, but um, I think it kept my brain uh, uh, open and uh, usable. I've certainly enjoyed and followed your work hard, play hard type of attitude. I think both of us have moved on from all nighters. I did a few with you back in the rest and office many years ago and a few here in Cincinnati thereafter. Another bad habit of, of yours that I learned was arriving uh, just in time before they closed the airplane door uh, getting onto it. But I think we both have better practices these days, Tom. So uh, we're well, both these more conservative practices. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how about any closing thoughts here, Tom, as we close this up? Well, I'm honored and humbled to be selected for the Robert L. Lawrence uh, Award. I thank you, Mike McLaughlin, Bob Gardner, Laura Dorn, uh, Diane Samuels, and others for uh, uh, applying for this award for me. And most importantly, thank you all for uh, the efforts you made to make SCS what it is today. Well, we want to thank you, Tom, were it not for the founding of the firm in 1970 and your wisdom in establishing the, 19, the ESOP in 1986, we wouldn't be here today. I thank me, Mike, and Bob, uh, and dozens and dozens of other employees who were hired by you who are still with the firm to this very day are very thankful for the opportunity. Thank you, Tom, and congratulations again on the award.